Okay, there we go. Riley has been on the couch almost all day. He's been sitting in my spot, but now I'm back in my spot. And he's beside me. He's being a really shucky, sucky, sucky boy. He was just having a bunch of dreams. Weren't you? Weren't you? You were dreaming. You were twitching. Yeah. Now well, he's getting a belly rub. Oh, yeah. Favorite thing in the world is his belly rubs. Mm-hmm. You mm, love it. You mm, love it, don't you? It's kind of hard to get this one I'm using my laptop. I would have got my camcorder or digital camera, but if I got up, he'd probably follow me. <laughs> Are you kidding? Oh, you're such a good boy. Say hello to everyone. Riley. Hi. Riley. Hi. Hi, baby. Oh, your ear is pink. Your ear is pink. Riley gets to go to the bed in the morning. Don't you? Yes, you do. You get to go to the bed. Mm-hmm. You don't know what that means. You don't know what it means when you get the carrying case out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got to go for his checkup. Well overdue. They sent us the card in, like, December. And I think he has to get his rabies shot this year. Which I don't understand why that, like, is legal. Like, it has to be done. Like, because I think we got him from... Don't run away. Ugh. You bum. Um, he probably didn't like me talking too much. <laughs> um, but he has to go to the vet. Because... Um, it's required. Like, with sneaker and boots, we never took them unless, like, they seemed sick. Like, sneaker we had to take quite a few times because he would get like allergic reactions or like he had like a urine tract and urinary tract infection at one point and stuff like that but boots she never she was healthy um until the end of course but really like she was she was good like we never took them for their annual because they were indoor cats and they weren't exposed to any other animals, so there was really no need. And But now, I guess because we've got Riley from the shelter, they have him registered. And so, like, also now, like, it's required that everyone, like, registers their pets. And... He pretty much was because, like, we got him from the shelter. So now, like, they know. And I guess somehow they probably have access to his records at the vet, at the clinic or whatever. So now, like, even though he probably doesn't need his other shots, he has to have the rabies one, like, every year. Because... Otherwise, they'll come after us, I guess. I don't know what how it works, but... Yeah, it's like the law that they have to get the rabies shot. But he stays indoors. He doesn't come in contact with any other animals, so... I don't get why he needs to. And I don't even get why he has to be registered. <laughs> because, like, he just stays in here. And, like, even when the door opens, he doesn't try to get out or anything. He's afraid to go near the door. Anyway. <laughs> this, um, I have another vlog that I made before this. Like, at the beginning of the week, and now this is the end of the week. But I haven't gotten around to posting another one yet. So, I'll probably post that one 
first and then this one. So both will probably be posted kind of late. Um, this one I could post right now because it's right on my laptop, being recorded on my laptop. But the other one was my camcorder and I have to get it onto the computer, edit it, and then upload it. Oh well. Um, I guess since I'm talking now, <laughs> um, I went to see the ENT yesterday, the new one, and it turns out I do not have a vocal singer's nodule, which is good. That's good news because then I think nodules are more serious than what I what the actual condition that I have is. And the actual condition I have, I don't remember the exact name because I, I have it written down, but I don't have it in front of me. I think it's something to do basically with the muscles in my throat um, and I guess also my diaphragm. <laughs> my diaphragm again. Um, I have a weak diaphragm as we found out with the respirologist and I don't know if that's kind of part of the problem but basically my body has forgotten how to breathe using the diaphragm. This is what I was told and because of that when I talk uh, or sing I'm not using my diaphragm to properly support my voice and so therefore it's causing a lot of tension in my vocal cords. Um, he felt my throat, and even just feeling my throat, he felt a lot of tension. Um, and he did a scope, which actually this time it wasn't that bad. It was actually a lot better than the other doctor. So obviously this guy knows what he's doing, so it doesn't hurt. But um, while he had the scope in there, he had me repeat various things, like just talking. He had me make certain sounds, and then he also had me do a, ah, like, kind of scale thing. That was horrible, by the way. Um, but he had me, like, do, like, a scale kind of thing where I kind of sang, like, low to high. And what's interesting enough is he found out that my singing voice works better than my talking voice. <laughs> um... <laughs> So really the problem, the hoarseness seems to be coming more from my speaking voice as opposed to my singing voice, which I'm actually really happy to hear. Um, so I actually don't, I mean, not to say that I couldn't benefit from taking vocal lessons if I so choose to, but vocal lessons is not really what's going to get rid of this issue. It is speech therapy. Um... Because basically they have to work with me to retrain my diaphragm to know how to breathe properly so that I don't s put tension on my voice every time I talk. And he actually even said like when he was listening to me talk, he can hear that the sound is strained. I guess, you know, he's a doctor. He knows these things. Um, and he even said like just as I was sitting and I wasn't even saying anything when he was talking to me and I was listening to him. He could tell just by the way I was breathing. He was watching me breathe. And he could tell by the way I was breathing that even just breathing, I wasn't using my diaphragm properly to breathe. <laughs> so, I mean, I told him about the weakness that was discovered. And, you know, he didn't have too much to say about that. I guess it could be connected. Um, but basically, that's what it is. So what I need to have done now is that the, the, the muscular, it's, it's some kind of a muscular disorder that I have in my vocal cords. There are several different types of it. And so they have to find out which type I have first before they can treat it. Now, the good news is that Alex now has uh, medical benefits at work. And they cover speech therapy. Um, so I'm not worried about the speech therapy. And he said I would probably only need three to four sessions and I would be cured. Um, and I would get my voice back without hoarseness. All that awesome stuff. Um, 
Now, bad news is that in order to figure out which type I have, they have to perform a more extensive test where they test like my vocal cords. Um, and they use two different instruments to do this and it takes like two hours and they do all this stuff and they it comes up on a screen where they can actually show me what's happening with my voice and what should be happening and what's not happening and how they can fix it and they can use it as a teaching tool when I do the speech therapy because it's videotaped and all this stuff. Well that test is 600 bucks and it's not covered by our government by OHIP and now he said some extended health care coverages such as my husband's work could possibly cover it. Now I don't know if this would be covered under speech therapy or if it's something different um, but basically we would have to look at Alex's policy like we haven't received the package yet because he just applied for it but um, we'll have to look into it to see if it's covered um, because if not I, I really don't know if we'll be able to do it but I hope I hope, hope, hope that it's covered and that I can do the test and that I can get rid of this hoarseness and have my voice back. Um, anyways, so that's pretty much it. Um, so like I said, tomorrow morning we're taking Riley to the vet and then we're going out to my grandmother's in Oshawa to celebrate my dad's birthday. I'm going to have dinner there. And then Sunday I'm having dinner at my mom's to celebrate my grandma's birthday, my other grandma, on my mom's side. <laughs> so we have a busy weekend um, ahead of us. So, and today I had planned to do some more rooting on this little tiny 10 inch reborn head. That's all I've done so far the other night. Um, I mean, it's so small you would think it wouldn't take that long to root, but I did nothing on it today. What a productive day I did. <laughs> uh, I did laundry. I did two loads of laundry. I washed some strawberries. And I played a practical joke on Facebook saying I was pregnant. <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> um, and then I went for a walk. And I ordered some pizza for dinner. And that's pretty much it. That's all I accomplished today. <laughs> I was supposed to pretty much hope, I was hoping to do this entire head today. But I didn't do anything on it. And now it is 1030. And I'm feeling like I want to go to bed soon. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll get anything done on this at all this weekend. I'm going to, that means I'm going to be crunch time because in two weeks I have a doll show. So this means I'm going to like be working my butt off on this all next week to hopefully try and finish it as well as the other one because I have another a second one of these to do as well. <sighs> hopefully, I, I would hope that I could do both of them in a two week period. I mean, I've rooted a big, huge head in a week and this is tiny. So isn't she cute? He or she? whatever it's going to be. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's it guys. See you later.